Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas, and this is something called a vortex tube. This takes compressed air, it goes into this chamber, spins really fast. Inside of one of these, there is a chamber, it's a ring around it, and the compressed air comes in through the top and it sits on that outer chamber. That chamber meets up with this, which has some slots in it that actually spins the air in a circular a vortex around the tube. So this piece here does not move at all. This just sits stationary. The air, that chamber, all the air is allowed to go around it. There is illustrations on the internet if you Google search uh, vortex tube to see how this works. So the air spins really fast. It comes over here and on this end there is a valve. This valve Air escapes around that valve. I can't get this one out, but you can adjust it. This actually has a point on the inside. So the air, some of the air comes out this side and spins around. Uh, some of the air goes back down through the center and comes out this side. Now, the interesting thing about that is that this is a heat pump, more or less. Hot air comes out this end. Cold air comes out this end. Just regular compressed air. It separates the hot and the cold with the way the vortexes work. It's not a super efficient way of uh, uh, generating heat or cold, but it does work really well. Now, what I'm gonna be doing in this video is showing you a very interesting side effect to this. This is a digital thermometer. I'm not gonna be showing you how the temperature difference is. This one actually has a dent in it, which affects the performance a little bit. This one gets probably 30 degrees difference on each side. There are better ones out there. This one cost me $70. I got it on eBay, but knew they cost around two or 300 bucks. So in future videos, I'm gonna be showing you how to make one of these. And I'm also gonna be sending you to a link of someone else who has a little bit different of a design on how to make these, but his channel's really good too. So you can hear my compressor in the background. What I'm gonna be doing is hooking this up and there is nothing on, this is just a smooth, piece of metal. No blades, no nothing. There's no moving parts in here, just swirling air. So when I hook this up, it starts to do it, say, and here's the interesting side effect. If you put this thermometer in there, So the amazing thing about this is that there are no moving parts with that. I'm gonna put a piece of reflective tape on this and we're gonna measure the RPMs with this RPM tester. You can see that if I test it, it'll tell me how many RPMs it thinks I'm spinning it at, 200 and some RPMs, 146 RPMs. This just sits in there like this and it wobbles around, so there's friction. It's not super efficient. It's not a perfect way of doing this, but it is really cool that that can do that. Here we go. One of the interesting things about RPMs is on a small, very small axis like this rod alone, spinning at 15,000 RPMs is really no big deal. But this is kind of impressive because the size of this is a lot larger, the diameter. So to spin this at that speed is pretty amazing considering there's no blades on there. Like a dental drill can do 100,000 RPMs, but it's very, very, very small that it's spinning on. This is a lot larger. This is almost an inch in diameter inch in diameter. I'm your host Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching. And enjoy our videos.